you will hear a new student, Stefan, talking to an assistant, Anna, at the student union about his membership. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 6. Hi, can I help you? Um, yeah, I hope so. Um, this is the first time I've been down to the Union. I'm a new international student and I just wondered what to do. Oh, right. Well, normally we ask international students to fill out this form and we put your details on the wall by reception. Then other students can contact you. It's a way for everybody to get to know each other. It can be a bit lonely otherwise. <laughs> oh, I see. What's your name? I'm Anna, by the way. It's Stefan Unger. OK. Well, just write that there next to name uh -huh. and then fill in the rest. All right. Um, what does it mean, degree programme? Oh, uh, just if you are an undergraduate or a postgraduate. Or maybe you're just here for a short course? I'm a postgraduate. Oh. Uh, do I need to say what in? Not really. It's too much detail. But you should put your department so people who have the same interests or problems as you can get in touch. So I'm studying marine construction, so for department, do I put down the science faculty then? Uh, just your actual department. That must be engineering, no? Oh, I see, yes. Then if you list what you like doing in your free time, not that we ever get any when we're studying, <laughs> and maybe you can meet up with someone socially or to join a club or something. Well, I like lots of things. Shall I just list them? Um, my advice is to just put one or two, like football and films or whatever. Otherwise, you'll get so many invitations, you won't get any time to work. OK. I think I'll just list computer games, as that's my big interest. Huh. I haven't played football for ages. <laughs> I may start to play once I get settled. Now, let's see. Next thing is languages. Yes. We find many of the international students get a bit tired of speaking English all the time. Sometimes they like to speak to someone in their own language. It's up to you. That is a good idea. I presume I don't need to put English down. Oh, no. <laughs> I put um, Italian and French. <clears throat> I can only speak German, my mother tongue. OK, well, that's fine. Just put that. Uh, what does accommodation mean? Is that my address? We're trying to find similarities between people and some people live in hall, some are in flats, some are in bedsits. So it helps if you say. I'm in hall, though I'd like to be in a flat. But that won't happen till the end of the first term. Put where you are now. You can always change it later. Uh, then finally, just put your phone number. I haven't really got one. I haven't sorted out a mobile yet. Well, it's going to be difficult for people to contact you then, isn't it? Mm. Why don't you put the union one and we'll take messages for you. OK. It's 02950659003. Have you got that? Uh, yes. OK, then. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 7 to 10.
Oh, I had a couple more questions about the services you've got here. Um, it says there's a photocopier here. Yes. You need to get a card from the shop, and then it's available to all students in the mornings. The union uses it after 1pm. OK. I see also the union organises loads of events. Are they always held here in the union building? It looks big enough. <laughs> If you're interested in something, you should check the poster or our website. In fact, we normally use the Round Theatre, opposite the Conference Centre, for most events, because the sound system is better. Right. I'll do that. Also, I wanted to hire a van. Can I do that through you? Um, no. You need to present a case, really. Oh. They're not just available for hire to anyone. Mm. The president said we have to limit who is allowed to hire them. The person you need to see is the transport secretary. She's on the second floor. OK, thanks. The other thing is, are all the discounts we get with our union card listed on the back of the card? I thought there might be more. No, that's it, I'm afraid. Mainly books, clothes and music. Though we are currently negotiating to get one on newspapers, so that should be valid for next term. OK. Thanks a lot for your help. Section 2. You will hear a library assistant talking about the library she works in. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 11 to 15. Hi, can I help you? Um, yes. I wanted to join the library. OK. First of all, let me show you around the library and explain a few things for you. OK, now we're here at the main entrance. You can see the reception, which is where you bring back and take out books. And also, we can order books and answer your questions there. Mm -hmm. Next to the reception, where you can see those old desks, is where we keep the magazines, because you can sit down and read there. They're divided into sections for sciences, geography, arts, etc. Uh, then, at the back of the library, you can see the section for old books. And next to that is where the books proper start. That used to be the science section, but now on those shelves you'll find the art section. We had a big reorganisation in the summer, which I think has made it clearer. Oh. <laughs> the numbering is standard, so you should be able to find what you want quite easily. However, if you can't find something, it probably means it's been borrowed. OK, then in the corner, next to the reference section, is where we thought it was quietest, and away from the phones and printers and things, so we've put the study desks there. They all have computer access, if you need it for your laptop. Mm. We do ask that you don't just read magazines there, though. OK, uh, then there's the reference section, where you can look up the files. Then, as we come back to the main entrance, is the next section, where we used to have the languages. It got very busy and noisy, so when we moved everything around, we decided to put the law books here. Also, because it's a smaller section, it fits quite well here. Mm. OK then, we're back at the main entrance. Over there, by reception, there's a door that goes to the extension. 
and we have further sections such as languages and study desks through there. So you could have a look round when we've finished. Then just between reception and the door here is where we decided to put the computers, but the computer magazines are in the magazine section. As we found too many went missing here. <laughs> okay, is that everything? You now have 30 seconds to read questions 16 to 20. That's great, thanks. Can you just tell me a bit about borrowing and the rules and whatever? Of course. Over the last two months, we've been introducing a new system for this, and you can now take books out for six weeks. That's generally enough for most people. We usually get books back within 30 days. Of course, you may decide to renew the period. You used to have to come in to get the book stamped because we don't like doing it over the phone as there's no record of it. But now you can do all that via email. Ooh. If you do forget to renew, then we do make a charge, I'm afraid. That helps our costs, of course, but we do insist on it. The good news is that there is only one charge. I know some libraries charge one pound for one week and then it goes up with each week it's late. We ask for one pound fifty as we think that's high enough to stop people being overdue. <laughs> the other thing you may want to know is what you do about books that are not on the shelves. We do have a system for reserving them. All you have to do is fill in a yellow form behind those blue ones on the desk mm -hmm. and give it to someone at reception. We'll let you know when it comes in. Also, sometimes you will need a journal article that we don't have but can get from other libraries. So we offer an ordering service if you need it. Now, if you'd like to fill in this form here, Section 3. You will hear two business studies students discussing a presentation they'll do on an article on working effectively in groups. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 26. So, Brad, what did you think of the article on group work? Oh, hi, Helen. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, with helpful pieces of advice on how to make group work effective. I think we were lucky to be given such a straightforward text to present at the Management Skills Seminar. <laughs> yeah. Actually, shall we discuss it now? Have you got time? Sure. It's only a 10-minute presentation, so we just need to explain and then give our views on the main points raised in the article. I'll jot down some notes. Right. So, there are three main sections. I suggest we start with listening. Yeah, effective listening in groups, because it's not something that's frequently covered on courses in our field. No, and we should say that in the presentation. Yeah. And also, effective listening's pretty simple, you know. I don't think it's hard to learn. 
Well, people think it's easy, but in my experience, most of us tend to be very lazy listeners. Okay, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Something I do think we should emphasize is the power of the listener's posture, gestures, etc., in making speakers feel respected. Not that you're just waiting for them to finish before jumping in with your own ideas. Uh huh. Okay, right.、Uh, the next section is on goal setting. Let's make sure we're clear what the article says on this. Yeah. Well, firstly, it says that all group members must be given time to explain their own goals. That's it. Yeah. And then, did it say that the whole group should agree on common goals? That's a bit too strong. It's more that everyone's agendas should be equally acceptable. But it does say that goals have to be realistic. You know. Achievable within a particular time. You've got it. That's really what the article's saying. There isn't really any point in having ideals if group members know they won't come to anything within a reasonable period. So I think a summary covering those points will be enough for that part of the presentation, don't you? Yeah. Now the last section is about conflict resolution. Actually, I thought it was the worst part of the article. Me too. I don't think it went into sufficient detail on the issue. Actually, I thought it devoted too much space to it, but that it was all rather boring, you know. It didn't mention some of the more radical theories. Absolutely, I found that really irritating. Right, and also I think it could have said more about. Conflict sometimes being healthy in groups. Absolutely, it just mentioned rather glibly about how we should avoid thinking of winners and losers, and that quick resolution of conflict is always desirable. Without explaining what these terms mean. Well, it gives quite detailed definitions, but doesn't develop a proper argument. Right. So for the presentation, I think we just give some definitions and and then explain what we. Felt were the weaknesses in the article's treatment of conflict resolution. Yeah, good. Now you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. So let's think about what we have to prepare for the actual presentation. Well, I suppose we'll use PowerPoint, but I'm hopeless at using it, especially if it has any visuals. I really have to look into doing a course on it because I know I'll need it in the future. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm quite happy using PowerPoint, and I'll put it together when everything else is ready. That's a relief, but yes, do that later. Okay. Now I heard the tutor saying we have to include some well-chosen quotations from the article. I'm not sure if we do. I'll email him to find out. No need. I can just have a look at the specs he gave us when he set the task. That'll be quicker. But the tutor definitely said we have to prepare a handout to go with the talk. I'm not really sure how we do that. Sarah did one last year. Who's she? She's doing the same option as me in marketing. I'll ask her advice on what to include. Great. So that just leaves the bibliography at the end. I suppose it'll mainly be articles. Yeah. So we'll just look on the web, and we can leave that till later. But we've been advised against that. Well, we could have a look through some journals in the library. I think we should start by looking through module handbooks. I think that'll give us some good leads. Yeah, you're probably right. So that's all the topics. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a lecturer talking to a group of engineering students about the design of a greenhouse. 
Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon. This is the first of a series of lectures I'll be giving about engineering for sustainable development. I'll be presenting examples of engineering projects from a variety of contexts and today I'm going to talk about a project to design a new kind of greenhouse for use in the Himalayan mountain regions. First of all, I'll tell you about the problem which was the context for this project. In the Himalayan mountains, fresh vegetables and other crops can only be grown outside for about 90 days during the summer because the altitude of the region is around 3,500 meters and because the rainfall is so low. In winter, temperatures fall below minus 25 degrees centigrade so fresh vegetables have to be imported. They arrive by truck in summer or by air in winter, which makes them expensive. Local people rely on dried leafy vegetables and stored root crops during the winter and rarely eat fresh vegetables. But despite the sub-zero temperatures, the skies over the region are cloudless and there are over 300 sunny days per year so, an engineering solution was needed to exploit the sun's energy and protect locally produced plants from freezing during winter. And in fact, there had been programs in the past to provide greenhouses, but these were unsuccessful. The greenhouses weren't adapted for local conditions, so they tended to fall into disuse. So, a few years ago, a project was initiated to design a better greenhouse, one which would meet the criteria for sustainability. So, what are the criteria for sustainability? Well, first of all, the new greenhouse is designed to be relatively simple, so construction is cheap. Locally available materials are used wherever possible. The walls are generally constructed of mud bricks made locally, although in areas of high snowfall, more resilient walls of stone are needed. Rammed earth is also used. The main roof is generally made from locally available poplar wood, with water-resistant local grass for the covering. In addition, the construction and maintenance of the greenhouse is done by local craftsmen. So local stonemasons are employed to build the greenhouse walls and specialized training is provided for them wherever necessary. Then, the greenhouse is designed to run on solar power alone. There's no supplementary heating. And lastly, families are selected to own one of the new greenhouses with great care. They have to have a site which is suitable for constructing it on. They also have to be keen to make a success of using it and also to share the produce with the wider community through sale or barter. Potential owners are taken to see existing greenhouses before they make a final decision about having one. So, those are the features which make the project sustainable. And now, I'll briefly describe the design of the greenhouse. The greenhouses are orientated very carefully along an east-west axis so that there's a long south-facing side. The transparent cover on the south-facing side 
is made from a heavy-duty polythene, which should last for at least five years. On the inside of the greenhouse, the walls are painted. The rear and west-facing walls are black to improve heat absorption, but the east-facing wall is white to reflect the morning sunlight onto the crops inside. Finally, there's a door in the wall at one end, and vents are incorporated into the roof, the door, and the wall at the other end to enable control of humidity and prevent overheating. I'll turn now to the benefits which have resulted from the introduction of these new greenhouses. These benefits are of various kinds, but for now, I'll just mention the social benefits. First of all, people who own a greenhouse gain social standing in their communities because they provide vegetables for the wider community, for regular consumption as well as for festivals, and they also earn income. Secondly, because in rural areas it is women who usually grow the food, the greenhouses have increased their opportunities. They bring the benefits of improved nutrition and increased family income from the sale of surplus produce. And thirdly, as a result of their improved financial position, some families can now afford to educate their children for the first time. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.